Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in the F14B Tomcat. We're going to look at airfield, taxi to runway, takeoff, circuit and VFR landing. So we're starting from a hot start. The first thing we want to do is taxi. So check our wings and from a hot start on an airfield they're started out so we don't have to worry about opening our wings up all done for us. Check that they're in the auto position and fully swept forward and they are. Next <clears throat> we're going to look at the controls we're going to use today. We've got a nose wheel steering toggle here. And we've got the wheel brake here, as well as our usual flight controls. Okay, so let's check our panel down here. Parking brake is going to go off by clicking on it. No st strut is going to stay in off. We only want to play with that when we're on a carrier. And we will do a version of this on the carrier, which will be different. Anti-skid down here wants to be off. And it's currently in the bottom position, which is spoiler activated, anti-skid off. So that is what we want. We don't want our anti-skid on when we're taxiing to the runway because it'll interfere and uh, cause problems with turning. So thrust forward a little. I'm going to stick below 15 knots if possible, 1-5. Press once the nose wheel steering button and that's going to engage the nose wheel steering. Note that when we take off, as soon as the gear are retracted, then the nose wheel steering will reset back to off. We're using the rudder axis to turn left and right, obviously. As long as we don't go above 15 knots, there's never really any reason to use wheel brake uh, until we come to stop at the runway here. So let it roll straight for just a little bit to make sure we've got our wheel nice and straight and we've got wheel brake on there i'm now going to turn my nose wheel steering off okay so now let's start with our final prep and checks before takeoff so over to the right display make sure that we're in takeoff and we are back to the landing gear panel I'm going to double check our nose strut isn't off and it is now regards anti-skid i like to turn the anti-skid on at this point because um when I come down for a landing, then we're going to be coming fast and it could be slippery. And so I like to have it turned on for then. So we're going to go to the top position, which means that the anti-skid is on and the spoilers are activated, the braking spoilers. And up to our position panels, speed brake is in and flaps. Now flaps is an interesting point. According to the flight manual, the F-14B can take off from an airfield with full flaps, intermediate flaps, maneuvering flaps or no flaps at all. So I don't really suppose there's a right or wrong, but uh, why don't we kind of go halfway in between? Let's go to medium. Regards power of takeoff. Now the manual states that the F-14B may only ever use military power, that is power, full power without the afterburner for takeoff on a carrier or on an airfield. Now I don't have absolutely no idea why that is. I mean, why would an afterburner cause problems? So I don't know, but those are the rules. So bear in mind that takeoff uh, will be fairly long if you are very heavily loaded and in fact because it is a game i know that triggers people but it is a game and not real life i would personally say just feel free to use afterburner if you're heavy but them's the rules so regards technique i'm going to hold on the wheel brake i'm going to spool up to mill power um so it's going to be on the rpms here up to 100 percent but the throttle is not in the full position so we've got to make sure that we don't turn the afterburner on and there are various ways of doing that but i just do it audibly you can audibly hear it when the afterburner comes on so just Hover the throttle just before afterburner comes on. Then when we're fully spooled and ready, we're going to release the wheel brake. As we increase speed, we are going to make corrections with the rudder, which will gain authority over about 50 knots or so. At 130 knots, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to pull back stick about 20 to 30 percent. And we're going to rotate to about 10 degrees here. So our longitudinal marker there is going to get up to about 10 degrees. We don't want to go over because if we go over, we can risk a tail strike and damaging the aircraft. Now, if she's lightly loaded, like we are today, we're nearly full, well, we are full fuel, but no stores, then she'll take off more or less straight away. If she's heavily loaded with bombs and stores and whatnot, then it may take longer and you have, will have to be patient and she'll take off when she's ready, 150, 160, 170, whatever. The key is just to stay at 10 degrees and not exceed it and she'll take off when she's ready. When we pull up, she'll be very stubborn, stubborn to uh, rotate. So just be patient, back stick just lightly. Careful not to be too aggressive with the back stick because then she'll pop above 10 degrees and that's where you're going to get your strike and it's just an inefficient way of taking off anyway above 10 degrees. Once we're airborne and have positive rate, the gear can go up straight away. Once we're above 160, 170 knots IAS, the flaps can go up and that's us flying. We're going to stay in military power. We're going to get into a left-hand orbit, which we're going to do at 300 knots and 1,000 feet AGL, 300 knots. It's just specific to the Reapers. I know it's fast, but that's just what we do. And then I'll report back on the downwind. Okay, so let's get on with it. Brakes on, spool up, and I'm 
quite new to this plane still, so I might slip in the burner by accident. If so, I'll just throttle back. And the brakes may not also hold mill power. We'll just see how it goes. No, we're not going to quite hold mill power, so brakes often now. We don't want to damage the brakes. And we're 100% throttle there, but no afterburner. So that's going to do us. I don't dare push it any further. So let's watch the speed increase on the speedo. That's 50 knots. 100 knots. 120 knots. 130 knots and 20% backstick when she's ready she's going to road say she's a little bit stubborn back we go meet 10 degrees and she's up straight away gear up check the speed flaps up wait for everything to be done retrim as per the speed flaps up fully one thing I noticed there is that the flaps will not go up until the gear are fully up uh, due to hydraulic use, presumably. So uh, just take note of that. Okay, we're on the downwind now. We're a thousand feet or so, 300 knots. You'll probably want to do your circuits a little slower between 200 and 250. Now note, whenever we do a VFR landing, that's a landing under good visual conditions like this. We'll never come straight into the runway. We'll always do a circuit. Now, rather than me go through that now, we have several videos on our educational general section about how to perform circuits, why you perform circuits and whatnot. All we need to now know is we're doing a left-hand circuit and we're going to be landing on this runway here facing that way. So when we unpause, we're going to extend one to two miles past the threshold of the runway and we're going to maintain a circuit height throughout this or as close as we can get to it. And when we decide we're ready, we're going to turn our base turn, a 180 degree turn. And this turn is where we're going to be doing our work. It's where we're going to be coming down from the circuit speed down to the approach speed. Now, the approach speed is an interesting thing in this aircraft because we're not actually going to decide an approach speed. What we're going to decide is an approach angle of attack. A lot of these naval planes like the Hornet and the Hawk work with angle of attack rather than speed. So we've just got to fly at whatever speed gives us the correct angle of attack. And that's going to be given to us with our AOA indexer and our AOA E bracket. And we'll go through that when we get onto the final approach. So my only advice is to get to below 150 and 200 knots IAS at the end of the base turn, ready for the final approach. As for altitude, we're going to try and stay about 1000 feet for the whole of that. As well as that, once we're below 230 knots, our flaps are going to come down. And this time they're going to come down to the full position. Speed brake, we shouldn't need to use. Our spoilers and anti-skid are going to stay in the up position. And of course, our display here is going to be in landing. So let's get that done. So we need our symbology. We'll go through the symbology a bit more when we get to our final. And once our flaps are down, our gear is also going to come down. So we're ready. Right, so that's everything gone through. Let's get on with it. Just going to display slightly right. I came in a bit close for my... Uh, downwind for some reason throughout the downwind or the downwind extension we're going to keep an eye over our left shoulder on the airfield so we can um, ensure that we come off our base turn on a good approach we won't have to do too much turning okay i think that's a good couple of miles we're going to turn in now we're going to start to come off the throttle so we can start to bleed the speed off we want to keep our path marker here which is where our actual aircraft is flying towards roughly on the horizon so we can maintain our circuit altitude and if i look down we've actually gained 400 feet uh, by doing that which is my fault but it does it's not the end of the world it doesn't really matter it's just good practice to try and keep circuit altitude if possible keep an eye on our speed we don't want to stall is the main thing here speed is now 250 knots and i better quickly show the speed we're reading off here it's a horrible uh speedometer this but that's 250 knots that's 200 when it gets below 200 then the needle will just show here and we want to get down to about 200 or just below by the time we finish this turn. And we're hopefully going to be in line with the runway. So let's keep going. Way below 250 knots now. So flaps can go down. When they're fully down, gear can go down. She's going to get dirty now. So we're going to need a bit, a bit of power to compensate for that extra drag. Okay, we're going to need to turn tighter now so that we come in line with the runway. Bit of power on. Overshot the runway slightly, but it's not too bad. I've done worse. Double check on the speed, about 170 knots. That's all fine. Radar altimeters showing about one, whoops, 1,000 feet. So we're fine there. Okay, we need to start talking about the symbology here. So I'm going to pause again. Symbology we've got for landing. Uh, this is for carrier and for, for airfield use. We've got this here as our path vector. That is showing where the actual aircraft is traveling. So that's where the aircraft is pointing. That's where the aircraft's traveling. Next is our E bracket here. 
our E bracket ensures, if we use it correctly, that we are at the correct angle of attack, which is what we are talking about earlier. Now, so what we need to do is travel at a speed at which this E bracket here is centered as best we can on our longitudinal symbol here. So we get that there, level with that there. We keep it there, it means we are at the correct angle of attack, and that's all we need to worry about. We don't need to worry about our speed. This will sort all that out for us. So, in a lot of aircraft, if we're running uh, a lot heavier, we have to come in at a, a set speed above our normal speed. We don't have to worry, worry about that with a naval plane. This E bracket will sort us out. So, that's what we're going to aim to do with our speed. Next, we have the AOA ind indexer. So, if you like a backup to this system, we have here. We have three little windows. If the little circle in the middle is showing, that means we are at the correct angle of attack. And that's just a redundancy for that E bracket being at our longitudinal axis there. If this little chap is showing here, it means we are too fast. Our angle of attack is too low. If this little chap instead is showing up here, then we are too slow. Our angle of attack is too high. And this dates back to the aircraft having to land on an aircraft carrier and meeting the ground at a certain angle of attack so that the uh, arrestor hook works properly. As well as that, I should mention this guy, he's obviously bugged at the moment because I've got it paused, but this guy we want to maintain at the threshold of the runway, at the position where we're going to land. When we get to the runway, we're not going to flare, we're just going to run our plane into the runway, okay? So, naval planes are a bit different to uh, airfield planes. We're going to uh, unpause now and get on with it. Okay, so the good news is that our path vector seems to have fixed itself, it's working again now. And because I don't really have to watch the speedo, I can actually zoom in like this and really get a good look at what, what we're doing here. So, maneuver down slightly, path vector on the threshold of the runway. I'm going to want to get down on the power, get the E-bracket down to our longitudinal axis. All the while I'm trimming to keep the aircraft neutral. Whoops, we're a little... There we go. Something like that. Now, we've, I've come out quite far because I wanted a lot of speaking time. I wouldn't usually come out this far, to be honest. So, it's going to be a very, very shallow ascent, much more than normal. That's fine. And we're slightly askew from the runway as well, but with such a small angle, it doesn't really matter. So we're still too far. So I'm going to have a quick check at the um, speedo, just out of interest. Oh, we're 140. Yeah, it's a little bit fast for a fairly light aircraft. So we're getting there now, though. Got our angle of attack meter on the left. You can see we're about 13 degrees. So we are quite a high angle of attack here. Our AOA index is still flashing. Okay, we've got the uh, the circle going on now, so it's looking a bit better now. Okay, we're happy now with the speed. We've got the E bracket in the symbology that we wanted. It's just a case of holding it now, so keep our path vector on the threshold of the runway. You'll notice I'm keeping it slightly left, so that's uh, to, to, so we can line up a little better. And we want to have zero back stick at all. So what I'm going to do is retrim, and you can see if you look at my controllers, I've got zero back stick. Uh, at all so everything's neutral the aircraft is now flying itself i'm putting zero input into it and that's how we really, really want to do all landings um watch the cursory check around flaps gears oh whoops wasn't concentrating went too slow so recover and a little bit too fast now so just off the gas and just gonna ease her down just slightly i've gone a little bit too fast now so ease her back down rest that Oh, we need to get that path vector back down a bit. Tiny bit of nose down. Generally, we're doing all the work with the throttle here, but making, we can make tiny corrections with the uh, elevator if we need to. Tiny bit of speed down now. Ever so tiny bit of stick up, but we're talking millimeter changes right now. And that's it. Hold it like that, smash it into the ground, and everything else is done for us automatically. It's a lovely system. Power up a little. We're going a little bit too slow. Tiny bit of right roll. Bit too much power up there. Arrest the throttle. Unfortunately, we slipped out of the E bracket just as we came in. It's all rather unfortunate. But I think we're going to be okay. And that's it. Resist the temptation to flare at the last minute as you would normal aircraft. We've got anti skid. We're going to pump the wheel brakes. Air brake out. Wheel brakes notoriously bad in this aircraft. That's it, done. Medium weight landing. Next we're going to go and do our carrier landing. Nothing else to say on that. The symbol just does it all for you. So it's, uh, it's pretty foolproof, to be honest. I hope that helps and see you later.